picture you see here is from the doorway of a third grade classroom in the southern United States that I took just a few months ago. And I can honestly say, when I look at that picture, that my heart still sinks and my voice starts to crack. Because what I think is, no eight or nine-year-old child should ever think that about a teacher, a classroom, what they're learning, what their peers are doing, or what the future might hold for them. What's most disheartening about this picture to me is that I think it's representative of the way many children and many adults feel about our education system at this moment in time. I believe this is a byproduct of an era of reform that is focused on accountability and a deficit-laden thinking that privileges measurement and standardization at all costs. Make no mistake, this is not a talk about whether or not our education system is failing or not. Nor is it a talk about the definite challenges that we face in American education. I also happen to believe that there are beautiful, wonderful things going on in the American education system, but that our conversation and our discourse is narrow and narrowly focused. This picture is of an elementary school library in an urban school in the Midwest. And while it doesn't seem particularly poignant at first glance, I can tell you from working with the district that every single thing in this photograph in this library was thought about in the service of children. The windows, the height of the bookshelves, the plants, the artwork, the lighting. All of this was in service of creating a joyful, purposeful space for learning. Which brings me to my point. I believe we need to urgently reframe the discourse surrounding education, educational success, and what it means to be a lifelong learner. What I'm talking about today isn't rocket science. It's not even brilliance on my part, as much as I wish it was. Philosophers and theologians have been talking for centuries about joy and learning. And all of what I've learned from my studies has come largely from children. The work you see here and the work that I highlight today comes from children and young adults. All of the things you see are from prompts about caring, about educational communities, and about peace. The single most important thing my students and young adults have taught me about education is that joy is paramount to the educational process. And when I talk about joy, make no mistake, I don't mean that everything has to be fun, and I don't mean that everyone just gets to study what they love or are passionate about. Quite the contrary. We need spaces where there is difficult learning going on in lots of different ways with lots of different people so that every child and young adult and grown-up gets to experience that moment of discovery. We need spaces where we go in not even realizing the exuberance or joy we might find in what we're studying. And we certainly need spaces where relationships are privileged. Make no mistake, joy is essential to learning, and joyful learning is essential to human integrity. When we focus on creating spaces of joyful learning, we create joyful learners who, in turn, create other spaces of joyful learning. And when we don't privilege spaces of joyful learning, we create jaded, disengaged, and unmotivated learners. In my research on what constitutes an educational community that is embedded with care, I've learned an important thing from children. They consistently tell me that forgiveness and humor are two of the most important things, as is evident in this artwork. 
This was done by a 12-year-old who explained to me when I asked her about it that all those colors that are swirled up there, those are the emotions that the teacher and the student are feeling. And the teacher is kneeling down and reaching out because she's telling a story about when she made a mistake. She's angry. And the student disappointed, my student told me. But she was able to forgive me. Educational spaces where we allow for mistakes and have healthy doses of laughter change failure. We allow failure to have a possibility of changing to success. And we never confuse I don't know with I don't care. Forgiveness and humor bring me to my next two pictures. This is one of my favorites. Relationships are essential to joyful learning. In this photo, one of my coworkers and colleagues here at Notre Dame hopped up on that table to take a picture of the whiteboard behind the child, and the child jumps into the picture. And what I love about this is that, one, you can't see what's on that whiteboard, which is an entire conversation with a group of children who just talked to us about what a flourishing community looks like. But the other thing that I love about this photo is that the kid felt like he could jump in. That tells me that the relationship was there. And this photo of these two young men who helped me with some other research. These two young men taught me that caring more than you think is OK is important. And they taught me the value of sticking around and sticking it out with children. By all accounts, these children should not have graduated from high school. But I'm happy to sit here and tell you that one just started his freshman year in college and is studying dance. And the other graduated from high school and is gainfully employed. I tell you that not to talk about a story of outliers, but to highlight what they taught me about how they made it through school. They, like other children that I've worked with, tell me that people are important. People who know what children are good at, people who know how to reach you, and people who know about your everyday lives. Relationships are central to joyful learning. And then there is the exuberance, the joy, and the absolute innocence of a newly minted kindergartner. Now, you might think that these photos are about the child, but actually, they're about the photographer. The photographer is another 12-year-old young woman who took these in response to a school assignment. Her assignment, creative expressions. That's it. Spend two hours every week for the next six weeks doing something that helps you grow in innovation or creative ways. My child, the young woman who took this picture, these pictures, is lucky enough to go to a school that values autonomy and creativity. I think these pictures are brilliant because they're beautiful, but also because embedded in them is an exuberance that flows into everything that this young woman does. She's lucky enough to go to a school where she's allowed to show what she knows in different ways. And she's allowed to be excited about learning and share that excitement with her peers. Just last week, one of the young women in her class was working on some poetry early one Saturday morning. And her father said, is that for school or for fun? And she looked at him kind of quizzically and said, it's both. And I couldn't help but think what an amazing, beautiful sentiment this was. Autonomy in learning allows children to learn for themselves what they can be joyful about. This brings me to my last story about joyful learning. And I'm going to share with you some pictures of my university students here. My university students are asked to do and think 
and work in hard ways. I expect a lot from them. I believe in the motto, to whom much is given, much is expected. And so when I'm teaching courses, particularly courses with difficult subject matter, I often ask students to join me on immersion experiences. And on these immersion experiences, I expect them to tackle head on in the real world the ideas we're learning in class. We move out of comfortable spaces and into spaces of discomfort. They go on neighborhood walks. They meet with community leaders. They are at museums and plays and performances and share meals and time to think and learn and grow together. These are uncomfortable spaces and often spaces that they wonder about when they're in them. But then there's this moment, often multiple moments, when I see students connect something from a text to what they're seeing. Or I see a conversation off at the side of the park that's happening about real and important things. Or just a student who realizes, hey, maybe this is important enough to really be thinking about. Those aha moments, those are joyful spaces. And I need those moments as an instructor like the air that we breathe. Students need those moments, too. We must create spaces where vulnerability and discomfort lead to success. In that way, we create joy, and we create joyful learning. Children and young adults are far wiser than we ever give them credit for. They have a deep, deep sense of self, an intuition that we should trust, and a whole lot of knowledge about the world that they walk in that we would be wise to listen to as adults. And so we need less of this and more of that. And today, with no particular authority, but a really hopeful heart, I leave you with this. I give you permission to think that cultivating joy is a worthy enough goal to think about in our educational discourse and in your own lives. And I challenge you to challenge our educational policymakers to care about children and schools in a way that cultivates safe, creative, playful, beautiful, accountable, but joyful spaces of learning. Thank you. <laughs>